to celebrate you. Thank you, Jesus, for this glorious time in your presence, and thank you for what you've been doing since last Sunday. Thank you for anointed ministries and the diverse impartations. Thank you for the set man over this ministry. Thank you for the grace and the anointing. Thank you for this great church, and thank you for your mighty presence here. Tonight, speak through my lips. Bless this great congregation. Bless all our viewers around the world. And let today mark a turning point in everyone's life. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand, please. And you may please be seated. It's my privilege to be here tonight and be part of this great conference. I love Pastor Bill and his wife. I'll do anything, anytime, to be anywhere that he wants me to be. <laughs> From the first time we met, I knew that God has something for us to do together. And I'm blessed, and I've been blessed ever since we began this journey together. Thank you, Pastor Bill, and thank you very much for being a friend. I love this church because it's word-based. I love this church because it is faith-driven. And I love these people because we are the same family. I'll be sharing with us tonight on what I've called unveiling the stronghold of faith. Unveiling the stronghold of faith. The same way the sun shines everywhere and the moon shows up in every nation, so also the truth triumphs everywhere. The Bible says, thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ and make it known by us the server of his knowledge in every place. The truth triumphs Everywhere. God is no respecter of persons. God is no respecter of nations. He said, now I know that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation, Acts chapter 10 and verse 34, everyone that fears him and walks uprightly is accepted with him. Truth is a universal commodity. It delivers the same value in every nation of the earth. Truth is no respecter of nations. Truth is no respecter of races. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9, he said, He has redeemed us out of every tongue, out of every kindred, out of every nation. Jesus, the truth, redeemed us out of every tongue out of every kindred, out of every nation. So the truth has the same effect in every nation, among every tongue, among every race. God is not a racist. He so loved the entire world, he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In Romans chapter 10 and verse 12, the Bible says, now I know, he said, the same God, there is no difference between the Jews and the Greek. For the same Lord 
over all is rich unto all that call upon him. So it's God of all the earth. No one is advantaged, no one is disadvantaged. Ignorance has been the greatest challenge of man. The ignorance of the truth will make a failure anywhere, anytime, any day. But the knowledge of the truth will guarantee your triumph wherever you are found on the earth. The truth will always deliver the same value. The truth will always deliver the same value. The same truth that brings us salvation, sanctification, is the same truth that brings us healing, deliverance, victory, breakthrough, prosperity, honor, glory, and blessings. Same truth. Same truth. In Revelation chapter 5 and verse 12, it says, Christ has obtained for us power. And Christ is the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except by me. And Revelation 5, 12 said, the truth has obtained for us power, riches, strength, wisdom, honor, glory, and blessings. So the same truth giving us access to these sevenfold amazing blessings of redemption. Same truth. Same truth. The word says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. So all that Christ offers us is delivered by faith. That's why we need to examine the miss your faith that grants you and me access to this beautiful, wonderful inheritance that we have in Christ. Remember, let him ask in faith, or let not that man think he shall receive anything from God. Nothing comes down from heaven except by faith. As free as salvation is, it comes down by faith. Every provision in redemption is only deliverable by faith. Without faith, it is impossible for you and I to assess our inheritance. And we have a sevenfold, all-embracing inheritance in Christ. Think of it. Power. Think of it. Riches. Think of it. Wisdom. Think of it. Strength. Think of it. Honor. Think of it. Glory. And think of it, blessings. There is nothing anyone is looking for under the sun that's not covered. Everything that makes for life and godliness is embracing there in that one verse. And the truth makes it available. The truth makes it available. So tonight, I'd like you to be very sensitive because God is up to something about your life. I have often said there is no mountain anywhere. Every man's ignorance is his mountain. There is no mountain anywhere. My Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge of the truth is what makes a victim. My people perish for lack of knowledge. We we'll see at chapter 4 verse 6. And Isaiah chapter 5 verse 13, he said, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. They are gone into captivity. I've done all I needed to do. But they are robbed of everything for lack of knowledge. They are held in captivity for lack of knowledge. So I strongly believe that tonight God is opening a new chapter to many of us sitting down here. The truth will always triumph in any place. Always triumph in any place. The truth will always triumph in any place. What is faith? Then we 
we can begin to look at the stronghold of faith. Faith is clearly the most potent force in all the universe. Faith is the most potent force in the universe. Why? If thou canst believe. How many things? All, All things are possible to him that believeth. How is faith the most potent force in the universe? Because it confers divinity on humanity. Jesus said, unto man this is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. And he said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. That means when you are operating by faith, you are operating in God's class. Amen. Mark 9, 23 and Mark 10, 27. When you are operating by faith, you are operating in the very class of God. Jesus said, whosoever believes in me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do. So faith confers divinity on humanity. Whosoever believes in me, John 14, 12. The works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do. So faith empowers us to operate in the very class of God. Faith empowers us to operate in the very realm of God. Faith empowers us to handle what only God could handle. This is so important. And with that understanding, then we begin to find out why is faith so powerful and the saints appear so powerless. If faith is so powerful, why are the saints so powerless? Something must be wrong with what we call our faith. Something must be wrong. If faith is that potent, why are we so impotent? <laughs> now, faith is not a mere biblical principle. Faith is our access to the power of God. Romans 1 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. So faith is not just a biblical principle. Faith is a spiritual means of empowerment. We are empowered by faith. The woman with the issue of blood went after Jesus, touched the hem of his garment and Jesus said, power is gone out of me. And he said, thy faith has drawn power from me, it has made thee whole. So faith draws on the power of God to impact on our life. Faith is not just a biblical principle, it's a spiritual platform for empowerment. When faith is at work, power is being released. Power is flowing power is bringing about changes so faith is about empowerment for triumph faith is not a principle we try to use faith empowers us to command results that lady was made whole by her faith drawing virtue from Christ so every time your faith comes alive virtue flows from Christ to make you whole. Faith is not a religious theory. It is a mystery of the kingdom. First Timothy 3.9, he said, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. So faith is not a story. Faith is a mystery. And what is mystery? Mystery is a kingdom secret that gives you mastery. Kingdom secrets that confers mastery on your life. I have often said 
I'm not just surprised that we are saying what we see today in our ministry. I would have been surprised if we didn't see them. That means I was too sure they were coming. I was fully persuaded by the mystery of faith that they were coming. I knew far back in 1982 that we're going to build a sanctuary that will see 50,000 people. So whatever we saw in the process is not important. I knew we're going to build a 50,000 seat auditorium. Why? God said so. I knew. While we had only one little rickety Volkswagen B2, I knew we were going to be flying as far back as April 1982. Why? God said so. I'm coming. I'd like you to please understand this, that we are not serving a fake God. We are not serving a fake God. Every time faith comes alive, God's integrity is committed to deliver. He said, what, we believe not, what if we believe not, yet he abides faithful, he cannot deny himself. Faith is not religious logic. It's a spiritual weapon. He said, above all, taking the shield of faith, and you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16. Faith is not a religious logic. It is a spiritual weapon. Faith is not a biblical philosophy. It's an ever-winning spiritual force. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. It's an ever-winning spiritual force. Faith is not a biblical philosophy. It's an ever-winning spiritual force. First John chapter 5 and verse 4. That's why it's very important for us to find out what kind of faith is it that works. What kind of faith is it that works? If faith is that potent, why must we remain so impotent, so helpless, so frustrated? There must be something wrong with what we call faith. And we need to put that right now. We have always thought that faith comes by hearing the word of God. That's true. But it's much more than that. Faith comes not just by hearing the word of God, but principally by hearing from God. <laughs> Romans 10, 17. Faith comes not just by hearing the word of God. Faith comes much more importantly by hearing from God. Hearing from God. If you check the heroes of faith as documented in Hebrews chapter 11, 80 to 90% of them came on that list by hearing directly from God. Hearing directly from God. Think of Abraham, the father of faith. The stronghold of Abraham's faith was access to the voice of God. Now the Lord said to Abraham, get out of their country, from their kindred, and take on I'll show you, and I will there make of thee a great nation, I'll bless you, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And so Abraham departed. Most of us have been hearing the word, but we have not been hearing from God. Hearing from God is the stronghold of faith. No one hears from God and doubt him. 
the voice of God is the cure for the doubts of life. You can't hear from God and doubt him. No. The voice of the Lord is mightier than the voice of many waters. You can't hear from God and doubt him. Abraham heard from God, get thee out of thy country. At the age of 75, he had no problem believing God because he had it from God infuses supernatural faith. You can't hear from God and doubt him. You can't hear from God and not believe him. You can't hear from God and not prove by acting on what you have heard. The stronghold of faith is access to the voice of God. All great stories in the kingdom, they are traceable to God told me. God said to me. God told me. God said to me. God said go. God said stop. God said move. God said go. Now, that's all it takes. The voice of God is the stronghold of faith. Think of Moses. No normal person would dare an institution, a nation, as Moses did. But the voice of God makes you dare the undareable. The voice of God will make you dare the undareable. The voice of God will make you think the unthinkable. The voice of God will make you move the immovable. Because Moses heard from God. Now I've seen the affliction of my people. Come now and I will send you to, to Egypt that you may bring out my people Israel. Exodus chapter 3 verse 7 to 8. And he said, oh, tell Pharaoh that Israel is my son, even my firstborn. If you don't let my son go, I will kill your son because I must set my son free. Now he was hearing that directly from God. Okay, Pharaoh is coming on that street now. Go meet him and tell him, Pharaoh, let my people go. No protocols. Now, you see, when you hear from God, it is irresistible voice. Irresistible. Now, hear what he said to Moses. Exodus chapter 7, verse 1. He said, see, I have made thee a God unto Pharaoh. God told him. So immediately, Moses knew his new status. He didn't approach Pharaoh as a man. He approached Pharaoh as a God. He said, see, I have made thee a God unto Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Now, think of it. He had a word by the Red Sea, and the Lord said, why are you crying unto me? Tell the people that they go forward. Exodus 14, verse 15. So they saw the Red Sea and they were moving because you can't resist the voice of His Majesty. Tell them that they go forward. Go forward to where? Into the sea. Yeah? <laughs> and the Bible records the sea saw them, it fled. Psalm 114, verse 1 to 9. The sea saw them, it fled. The voice of his majesty is the cure for the doubts of life. If you can assess his voice, you are free. Think of it. The Lord spoke to Abraham and said, This is my covenant with you. You will circumcise every male born in your house and that is bought with your money. And Without any fear, Abraham took a stone, circumcised himself, and all the men in his house. Because his voice is irresistible. The voice of the Lord is irresistible. Listen to me. And then God said to him, take thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest. And check out on the mountain, I will show you, and then you, circum you sacrifice him there. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, took his son, and began to go. 
So when we talk about the faith of Abraham, we must understand the root of it. The voice of God is the stronghold of Abraham's faith. The voice of God was the stronghold of Moses' faith. The reason why our faith seems to be important today is that we have not been experiencing access to his voice like the heroes of faith that we know of. And tonight I pray that every spiritual deafness be healed in this room tonight.